In this bot example case study, I want to walk through building out a simple trend trading with options bot. And we're actually going to reuse parts and components of the existing simple trend trading with stocks bot that we built out in previous videos in this section. This gives me the opportunity to do a couple things. One, show you how to start trading with bots using option strategies, but also show you how to reuse and replicate different components that make bots really flexible as you build out your portfolio of bots. In this case, we have our simple trend trading with stocks bot. If you remember from previous videos, it has a number of automations that are built into it, like our scanners for different symbols and our one stock manager that we have. Now we might like most of what we have inside of this simple trend trading bot, so we might wanna reuse parts and components of this bot as we build out our new one. Let's keep that in mind as we create our new bot. So up here, we're gonna create a brand new bot and we're gonna call this one simple trend with options bot. And this one's gonna be a little bit more specific to options trading. Now we'll keep this one small to start, just a small allocation and one position daily and one position in total, and then we'll simply create our bot. Once we're good to go, we simply view the bot. And notice it adds the bot to our list of bots that are available inside of our sidebar. Again, just as a reminder, because we created a new bot or created a new clone of a bot, all of the automations are automatically turned off. It's not until we are actually ready to go with all of our automations and settings before we actually can turn on the automations and let the bot start running. Inside of our list of automations, notice we don't have any scanners or monitors because we created a brand new bot, we didn't create a clone. And this is okay, this gives us the ability to reuse some of the components from the original bot if we want to. With this simple trend with options bot, we want to get into positions that still use the same 200 day moving average as our indicator or as our trigger for entering new positions. And we want to reuse some of the components that we have previously built out in the first bot. Now, because we're going to be doing something a little bit different with options, we are going to be creating a couple different variations of the automations that we have currently, but we can still use those as the basis for creating this bot. Again, this gives you the ability to use existing automations and create more flexible controls inside of your bots. The first thing that we're gonna do is add a scanner. Now we can pick from the list of automations that we currently have, and we only have one that we've saved. This is our trend scanner for stocks. If we were to pick this particular automation, it would enter a position if the stock is in an uptrend and it would buy long equity. Now, because we don't wanna buy long equity for this particular stock, we don't necessarily wanna use this automation. However, we could create a copy of this and then customize it. Now, this is a really cool feature because we can create a copy of this particular automation and reuse most of the components that are in there, just tweaking the ones that are appropriate for now trading options. So let's create a copy. When we create a copy, it adds the new copy title here, Trend Scanner for Stocks Copy. But we're not actually trading stocks. We're gonna be trading options. And in this case, we're gonna be trading a put credit spread. And we can put that in here so we can be more descriptive with our titles. We wanna add this new copy to our library as well because we may wanna use this across other bots that we have. Notice that this particular automation already has a ticker input field that we created in one of the first videos. So we're ready to go and we just simply hit save. Now when this automation starts running, it will go through and check and see if the ticker's price is above the 200 day moving average. That's great. We don't need to reuse or we don't need to edit this field because that's exactly one of the fields that we wanna continue to use in this new variation. We're gonna use the same trend as a 200 day moving average as our trigger for getting into a new put credit spread, a very simple and basic option strategy. But down here below on the yes path, it currently has open long equity. We don't actually want to open long equity, so we want to actually delete this particular action. And it asks, are you sure you want to delete this? And we say yes. Now what we want to do is we want to replace this action with a new action to open a position that is a short put credit spread. Again, you can go down here to the list of available positions or types of positions that you can trade, and you simply click there. Now we can choose the symbol. Again, we can hard code the symbol in here or because this automation has a custom input for the symbol, we can reuse the existing ticker just like we did before on the last one. This will check and see if the position that we're checking the moving average on is gonna be the same one as the one that we get into a new position. Then we can customize all of the fields and variables inside of our particular open put spread position and make it exactly what we want. Notice that each of these has their own list of recipes that you can choose from that we've gone over in other videos. 
We'll keep this one really simple and just choose the default settings here to enter a 30 day to expiration, 30 delta, long 10 delta put credit spread and just one contract or one spread. Once we are ready to go, we simply hit save. Now what we've done is we've used the existing trend scanner for stocks as the basis for creating this copy. We've modified it to change the title and to change the actual action that it does, but it still uses some of the original components, namely the trend indicator that we have right here to check and see if the ticker is above its 200 day moving average. Once we're ready to go, we simply close out of the automation editor and we verify the ticker symbol that we want this to trade on. Let's choose something a little bit different like QQQ. Now we can name this something like QQQ trend scanner or whatever we want in this more descriptive field. Once we hit save, that now gets added to our existing scanners. Notice it's the first scanner here. And again, it's turned off immediately and automatically because all of the automations are off inside of this bot until we're ready to go. So this is a really cool way to, again, reuse some of the components from the original scanners. Now let's build out our monitor automation. We can again go here to add a monitor automation. And from before, we could use the existing monitor automation here, which would check and see if the stock is still in an uptrend. Now, in this case, because we're just simply checking to see if the stock is in an uptrend and then closing the position, this monitor automation can be reused in its entirety. Now, I'll show you two different ways in which you can do this. Again, one first reusing the existing automation and then another way creating a copy to make it more specific to the option strategy that you're trading. Again, there's no right or wrong way to do this necessarily. I'm just trying to show you some examples to help give you some ideas on how you might want to set them up for your particular bot. Now, because we are simply just looking at the stock trend and then closing the position, and you can always go in here to the edit feature and just see exactly what the automation is doing, we could reuse this existing automation. It's simply going through a repeater action to pull in the data on each and every position, checking to see if the symbol price of whatever option contracts we're trading are above the 200 day moving average. And if they're not, then simply closing the position in full. That still works. And with an option strategy position, that could work most of the time. If the stock remains in an uptrend and we're selling a put credit spread, it's likely that the stock is not necessarily challenging our position or that we are selling options far away enough from the position to let the position just simply expire. But that may not happen all the time. So we could still use the stock trend manager or we could create a copy of it and start to make it more specific to our options strategy. So let's create a copy of this. And again, we'll go up here to the title and we'll call this put credit spread manager. We'll add this to our library so that we know exactly what this particular monitor automation does. And then we'll simply hit save. Now we'll go into some of the actions and customize these a little bit more for our put a credit spread position. Now notice in this case, because we're trading an option strategy, which has a defined expiration, we might want to start adding some additional recipes and we'll add a couple small variations to this one. And again, we'll get progressively more complex with additional examples as we go through this section. Here, we're going to change the repeater to repeat through not just any type of position that the bot has, but specifically any short put spread that the bot opens. So this particular manager, this put credit spread manager automation would only cycle through put credit spreads that are in the account. So it would not look at call spreads or put debit spreads or long stock or short stock. It would only focus and pull in the information for this particular automation when we have short put credit spreads. We still can check to see if the stock is above its 200 day moving average. That is still a valid decision that we can make. And if the stock is not above its 200 day moving average, we could in fact close the position. That could be one of your steps as well. But if the stock is still above its 200 day moving average, we might want to also check to see if we have say a 50% profit on the position. So we add another action here to make another decision. Again, only if the stock is still in an uptrend. If the stock is in a downtrend, we immediately close the position, but the stock is in an uptrend, we might want to have one other check to see if the stock has a 50% profit. So here we go to the criteria and we go down to the position criteria or recipes. Now we can pull in the information for this particular position and check and see if the premium on any of our positions have gone down by 50%. That would represent for a short put spread, a 50% profit. 
Notice that when I go in here, I can actually pull in the position of the existing short puts that are in here. If you don't see this field in here, it's because you haven't added this particular step behind a repeater. Again, the repeater pulls in all the information for each existing position. So here I can simply select position, whatever one it's looking at at the time, and check and see if the position's premium has gone down 50% since it was opened. Again, I can create custom inputs here, or I can just manually type in these values. Once I'm good to go, I simply hit save. And that decision criteria has been added to my list of criteria. I can add more criteria here if I want to, or I can just simply continue with this one set of criteria. Once I'm good to go, I simply hit save again, and now the bot is gonna make an additional decision after it makes this decision. Again, now we're starting to customize it a little bit more for this particular strategy. So whenever this monitor automation runs, it will first go through and pull in all the data for each of the existing short put spread positions in the portfolio, check and see if the symbol price on any of those positions is above the 200 day moving average. If it's not, it will immediately close the position and remove it from the portfolio. If the stock is still above its 200 day moving average, it's gonna then check and see if we have a 50% profit. And if we do, we wanna go ahead and close the position. So we simply go over here to add another closed position action. We select the position from the list that's already pulled in from the repeater and then simply hit save. Now the bot has two different ways in which this particular put credit spread could be managed. The stock is now in a downtrend and the answer to this particular decision is no, it would close the position. The stock is still in an uptrend but has a 50% profit and then it would close the position. And we can continue down this no path if we want to and continue to add more decisions if we feel like it's appropriate for our particular strategy. Again, we'll get really complex with some of the other bots that we build in this example section here in the help center. But let's just say that we're good to go with this. This is the only two different ways that we wanna manage this put credit spread for right now. If we're good to go with this, we simply exit out of this and we simply hit save. That now adds a new put credit spread manager to our existing list of monitor automations. Again, it's gonna monitor any of the existing put spreads in our account, regardless of what ticker symbol they are. Again, just if we wanna add more ticker symbols to our particular portfolio here, we could simply go over here to add a new scanner and we go over here to this current one, this trend scanner for options and particularly put credit spreads. We add that and then we change the actual symbol that we wanna trade. In this case, we could use this as XOP. Again, we add a more custom description if we want to and add this to our list of scanners. Now inside of our bot, we have two different scanners that are running. And again, those two different scanners could potentially open put credit spread positions, which still only need to be monitored by one monitor automation. This monitor automation goes through all put credit spread positions in the account. You don't need to create multiple ones. So there's a very simple way to build out a trend trading strategy with put credit spreads as your actual strategy of choice. Once you're good to go, you just simply go over here to turn on all of the automations and let the bot start running. Again, the bot will adhere to all of the global settings and rules that you put in place here, namely the allocation limit and the position limits here. So be sure to check these as you're testing out your bot and running them in paper trading mode to make sure it's working exactly the way that you want.